All right, welcome. I'm Cece Jaconi. I'm Kelsey Bowman. And this is Go Big or Go Decom. Uh, Kelsey, what are we going to do? We're going to jump right in. <gasps> jump in! I, I jump in with, <laughs> jump with Corbin in. Blue. This is our second week for Black History Month, so we are yeah. picking another title where the main cast is primarily Black. Um, and so we chose Jump In, Tell Me, from 2007. This came out the year after High School Musical. I so think Corbin we have Blue, found the golden age of the decom. I agree. Corbin Blue is a household name at this point, in my opinion. <laughs> this movie, I mean, this it had everything. It was it so had good. music. It had drama. It had character development. It was like... For everybody. Our bully everything. had such good character. Our parents. You know I love the parents. Yeah. Like, the, I, the, oh, for, it was I forgot so everything good. about this movie except for the double dutching. And I was like, oh, I forgot about the boxing. I forgot about the I don't the dad. know if I'd so ever good. actually seen it. Of course, I uh, knew Push It to the Limit. Push it. I forgot Push It to the <laughs> Limit was from this. And I was sitting there and I was like, Push It. Push it yep. to the limit. Like yeah. Corbin Blue, sing it for this, me. This movie was really good. <laughs> Just like through and through it. And I can't wait to talk about it because I, I think part of what made it so good was that they really embraced it being a Black story. Mm-hmm. And like that was every like that was just there were things that happened in this movie that wouldn't normally happen in a decom um, just because of the situation, um, the culture you know, in which it took place. Mm-hmm. So I, I thought it was pretty cool. So where, where do we want to start? Let's just start at the beginning. So we jump right in, we're in Brooklyn and we have a narrator, which is something we actually had felt the color of friendship would have benefited from. Oh, yeah. I got some feedback on our last episode. Okay. Um, Our friend who listened to the episode told me they didn't watch DCOMs very young not until they were in middle school really Mm -hmm. because on the east coast decoms premiered at 8 p.m okay so she was like i had a bedtime i couldn't watch two hours of this movie go to bed at 10 p.m interesting seven years old and i thought oh that is interesting because i grew up in new orleans Mm decoms premiered at 7 p.m also hour made a big difference that's fair enough Fair enough. I mean, I I think that this is a conversation that we've had with a couple of them at this point, is like, who is the audience? Um, Mm -hmm. The Jenny Project was... (laughs) God bless. Uh, The the Jenny Project was another one where it was like, who who is is the audience for this one? Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Yeah, some of the newer ones I I think that we've done. um, Yeah, it's interesting, but that's a good point. And uh, this one, I mean, this one I thought was just a great, like, family movie. Um, it reminded I, me I in some ways. I think everyone could watch this movie. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it had... Uh, what did it remind you of? Well, it, you know, just kind of in passing. And uh, it, it reminded me of one of my favorite movies, which is Akila and the Bee. Um, Kiki in- Palmer's here. There we also, go. Also, she was in two episodes of Degrassi. Kiki Remember Palmer that? was? According to her IMDb page. Okay, I didn't look at that. Uh, for for listeners, uh, I was a big Degrassi fan. Probably like late middle school through high school. Even Is in the college. Is that our next podcast? After <laughs> we're going to rewatch Degrassi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I would be all over it. I'd love that too. <laughs> um, but it's been really funny because a lot of the DCOMs have Degrassi stars uh, either while they were in Degrassi or before and it makes it's sense. It's a similar age range. It's a similar age range there's only going to be so many good child actors at one time mm-hmm. um, you know and so it makes sense. It made sense especially for this one because it was filmed in Canada and Degrassi is a Canadian show. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah. Drake so... is Canadian. Drake is Canadian. <laughs> That's right. So so all of the actors that, that were in Degrassi were Canadian. So um in this one, the the two actors are, um, uh, and I'm going to butcher his name, Mazen Elsadig, who played one of his friends, one of his boxing friends. Okay. Uh, he played Damien in Degrassi. And then the other one was Paula Brancati, who played, like, the stuck-up girl on the Dutch Dragons, who was the always, The main like, Dutch boom, Dragon boom, girl? Boom, boom, yeah. 
and she played um oh shoot watch i uh i'm forgetting jane in degrassi who was kind of like a a little bit of an emo character Mm -hmm. uh but interestingly at the same time from at in 2007 so that was just kind of cool to see um but let's get started so our main character izzy is corbin blue i see he's a boxer his dad owns the boxing gym he's a very good boxer he's up and coming he's Oh, we start with like an intro. He's like running around. He's listening to music. Kind of like Rocky. Around. He does a split. Yeah, it's supposed to be Rocky. Yes, because wearing like a ripped sweatshirt. Dragon. And then um, he's you know he goes and talks to Kiki Palmer and her friends. Like we're introduced to a lot of people very quickly. He we, he's friends with Kiki Palmer. They live right next to their apartment building. So they're like they're right. Yeah, next to it, they we get the neighborhood. Escape the the neighborhood mm-hmm. vibe that yes. that's what and i think that that is something that um you know urban urban culture i don't want to say it's specific to black but that was something that we haven't necessarily seen in other especially in large movies. city it's in, it's based in brooklyn so that right. makes sense a lot of the obviously movies that are primarily white take takes in the suburbs um although full, a full court mir- a full court court miracle is a notable exception that's that true. one ha- that one had a, a neighborhood vibe to it uh mm-hmm. also but they were so you know, we're talking to the Double Dutch girls. He kind of rags on them for playing Double Dutch. Kiki Palmer is a great actress. Kiki Palmer is also interesting. She's in this, and then she goes on to be True Jackson VP on Nickelodeon. Just transcending oh. boundaries. left And, and right. Kiki Palmer, was she Proud Family? No, that's Kyla... Kyla Pratt. Kyla Pratt, yes. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, but, but, I mean, yeah, Kiki Palmer great is great. She has a podcast now. She is iconic. She's done great things. Like what's her podcast kick- about? I don't remember. Sorry, <laughs> I'm like um, I'm, I'm looking at her credits right now. She was in Lightyear recently, yeah, and nope. Oh, interesting. And she the had a thriller. baby. She had a baby. She's a mom now. So nuts that all of these Disney can- Channel stars grew up. She's she's doing great. Yeah, baby. This is Kiki Palmer. It seems to just be about her. Yeah, so she, yeah, she was in Degrassi. Look at that. And she didn't what she didn't know who Al Gore was. <laughs> in what? Meme. No. You know, like <laughs> they showed her pictures. She was in some interview and they showed her a picture of I think it was Al Gore. Or or it was Dick Cheney. It was Dick oh. Cheney. And she says, I've never seen this man in my life. Sorry to this man. <laughs> That's so funny. Did you see recently there was the the bachelor who they showed him a picture of Gypsy Rose Blanchard and they were like, Who is this? And he said, That's Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Oh no. Yes, yes. <laughs> that is so funny. So good. That's somehow disrespectful to both of those women. <laughs> but I mean, it happens all the time. Like, I mean, it just happened right now when I was like, oh, like, who yeah. did Paula Brancati play? Uh, you exactly. know, so it's 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 normal, but have it's funny. Three names, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Back to the movie. We're home with his dad. His dad's struggling to cook. He's like, oh, I, I tried to make this just like your mom, and he's not doing it. Yeah, we so we find sense. out that, that his mom had passed. Mom has passed away. Dad's doing his best to keep the fans. He has a younger sister named Karen. He's a good dad. He he is a good dad. He what a good dad. I love right? him. Right, like he like every every night at seven o'clock is when they eat dinner, and he supports you know whatever his son wants to do. They joke around with each other, you know. He they like do. for being a single parent, he like doesn't seem stressed out. He's which I mean, strict, but it's fair. Yeah. Like at one point, Corbin comes in and they get in like a mini fight, but he also says your curfew is two hours ago. To which I'm like, well, Corbin, this is about more than boxing. Your curfew is two <laughs> hours ago. Izzy, his name's Izzy. Isidore, Isidore is a great name. Also, I was yeah, I was vibing. There, there's two Izzy. saints, two saints, two Saint Isidores. One is the patron saint of the internet. The other Funny. is the patron saint of farmers. <laughs> two things i love i love the internet and amazing <laughs> yeah so he, he's izzy and i just want to at the front say the athleticism in this movie is amazing. unlike so he, anything i have seen a before. a lot of all the other double dutch crews we see are actual double dutch crews these are people these really? are, this is what they do and then him and kiki palmer so corbin blue and kiki palmer did six weeks of six hours a day i think double dutch training that's I mean, st- just, still for what they did so so, so to get back in the plot uh yes, you know he comes home he's gonna be in this big boxing match um mm-hmm. he's talking to his dad about it 
He's talking to his dad about it. And his sister wants him, him to take her to a double dutch competition. Yeah, she's much younger. She's eight. So yeah. she wants to go to a double dutch competition. The dad Can't says, I, I have to do something, right? Dad says, you're taking her, Izzy. Um, there's also there's a cute scene where like she, the dad can't do her hair, which I thought was great portrayal of because we've discussed like natural hairstyles. Yeah. Obviously, both of us are white, so we have different right. hair than um, black people do. But it's something that like needs to be styled. It takes a little more work, and so the dad tried to do her hair and he didn't do it well. And so Izzy tries to help her, and he's like, "You miss mom," which when people always say that in movies when you have a dead parent. And it's also, to me, I have two dead parents, right. one who died when I was a child. So um, it's always a little funny to me to hear that line because I'm like, someone, whoever wrote this did not lose their parent as a child. Because neither of my siblings would like, ever come to me. And yes, like, you always miss your parents. Right. Do you miss mom? Of course I miss mom. I miss mom. No, actually, time. today I'm fine without her. <laughs> right. She wasn't that great. I could go. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is so awful. <laughs> no, it's I can laugh. My parents like, are I, dead. I could fine. go either way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but so yeah, yes, they miss their mom. mom. It's sweet. He does help her do her hair. And then he takes her and her two friends. He ends up getting, like, she, it's a very younger sister thing. I was a younger it's sister. It's very so. cute. I related to this so much because once yeah, I could drive, once I could drive, I would, like, drive my sister's friends around or, like, take them back home or whatever. You can't. You can't see me nodding vigorously unless you're watching on YouTube, but I, that was me. I was, my mom was always like, you have to take Kelsey here, because I have two older siblings. You have to take Kelsey yeah. here. You have to do this. Like, you can only go if you bring Kelsey. I saw Mean Girls in theaters alone with my older sister, and I was, I must have been in fourth grade, and this was like one yeah, of the we, first we were, movies I'd seen alone. Like I think my, I think my mom said to her, you can only go if you bring, you can only go alone if you bring Kelsey. It was one of those, it was literally this thing. And I went with her and I felt so, like, I'm pretty sure I wore a skirt. Like, what was I doing? And a Gen, a Gen Z girly, I am not. And so I'm pretty sure I wore a skirt. And I was like, I am so cool. I'm going to see this PG-13 movie alone with, with my, my sister. sister my and parents. then I'm pretty sure the next day at school, someone was like, oh, you saw it over the weekend with your sister? And she was like, because everyone was talking about Mean uh-huh. Girls was like that movie, and and um, she goes, "Yeah, my mom made me take her." <laughs> <laughs> and it broke my little heart. And you were like, "No!" <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was like, I felt so cool, and she just shattered it. But that's yeah. me, the younger sibling. So, okay, so they're I'm hanging out. Rebound. No, the interesting thing about Double Dutch, um, at least in this movie, and and I I don't know how much in reality, but it's painted not necessarily in the competition like there's guys that do the competition mm. but at least in izzy's circle neighborhood neighborhood like just discussed double dutch is a girl's thing like and so um yep which i really like so we have a black movie where race is not the primary primary it's not, folk it's not really a focus at all honestly, it's not a concern example. at all it's not brought up and that's because like you said it's a black movie like there's other things going on right. in their lives not that racism wouldn't affect any of these people but they have right like, but that's just, just about their day-to-day not, life not a plot point um but masculinity is it's mm-hmm. very much so and so that's i i look forward to talking about that because that is something that we haven't really encountered even with high school musical like like high school musical i think stopped short of it, being like oh like guys don't do musicals exactly. i mean they did a little it bit it wasn't with the dancing. guys don't do musicals it was troy bolton doesn't because do he's an musicals. athlete right because he's an athlete and you um, stick to your stick to the status quo so i think the exploration of masculinity in this movie is amazing and important and i think they did it really well so we see the double dutch competition amazing incredible um, amazing <laughs> Like, I was like never seen anything like it I watched two seconds and I thought could I do this and then I watched two no. more seconds and I thought, absolutely not absolutely. I don't even think I could do normal double dutch let no, alone I, I used flex. to we used to do it on the schoolyard really and yeah but I was I'm a really good spinner actually so I would okay. just spin for everybody yeah, and other people would jump do it because yeah, no, just but, spinning I mean, just being the spinner for double dutch takes practice well, there there's like a 30 second time when you see kiki palmer and i guess that part of the competition is that they're counting how many they can get in a certain amount of time how many jumps and she's just like faster faster and her feet are barely leaving the ground as she's doing this like i i don't understand like it it was 
and just seeing how fast she was moving like i've never seen a human being move that fast no see. <laughs> like seriously uh just like the the total coordination and i mean the fact that these are like children because that was actually and i i'm curious she this... was young she was like 14 when they filmed this and, and they all felt very young they all felt like freshmen or sophomores he was like 17 but then for a 17 because i thought i think he's 17 because i knew he was the youngest on the main high school musical cast sure. but he's very like we just said he's very athletic he's he looks very in shape yeah and it's because i mean he's been doing so much double dutching to do this but movie. i was curious whether or not he had a stunt double at all because at several points he's not just double dutching he is like he's back hand spraying <laughs> like crazy stuff so i was curious whether or not you you encountered anything about a stunt there double. were stand-ins during okay. all of the double dutch scenes so that if the actors got tired they could keep filming it wasn't uh, necessarily the actors couldn't do it it was that like the film could progress which obviously especially dealing with underage actors you can only yeah. have so many hours like you've got to go so wikipedia does say he had a stunt double for some of the jumping backflips and whatnot it makes sense I would have needed a stunt double for everything. It would have been like, Kelsey, you'll film your Absolutely. scenes talking to people. And then the second someone picks up ropes, just get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to only film you from behind. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Kelsey so... happens to only jump rope with a ski mask on. It's just a character trait. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's funny because obviously the little girls are just like absolutely you know starstruck with the double dutch and he starts to get and he starts like it. clapping and then his sister is like oh like you liked it and he's like no i was just a fly <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a fly in here that was cute so, and he yeah. gets more into it that we see him looking at the male crew uh-huh. that's all just j- jumping around and they're jump they're like doing push-ups over each other while that was bananas blew my mind i'm telling you watch this, this was movie. like i said i i can't think of any like sport that requires yeah. as much physical you know shape and yeah and technical so, skill we leave the competition they get in fourth place the team at this point they're called the joy jumpers mm-hmm. they qualify for the regional but they didn't win and the dutch dragons who are meanies won first place their outfits hideous they're wearing <laughs> jeans they were wearing jeans they double dutched in jeans they're all bananas Where, and like a jean vest not, a denim and vest. A jean vest and a hideous that fabric must have been on sale because they use it a lot but <laughs> like shiny iridescent it's a very xenon type fabric and mm-hmm. their outfits are ugly and then we go to school the next day the bully is being handed free clothes by a teacher so we learn he's that poor. our bully who's our main antagonist his father's out of work and he's just not doing well and he's taking it out on other people wow but just immediately from the beginning, this is how we're introduced to the bully. Ah, and it. so this was another component that we haven't, I mean, again, a little bit in full court miracle, but like poverty, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like to really see that. And I know, I don't think it was at this point, it was a little bit later when um, a teacher uh, hands him a bag and I guess it was closed that's again. This, that's this point. Oh, oh that's closed. the scene. Um, and he's embarrassed and he throws it out. Um mm-hmm you know so like the the pride of that and the struggle there's the struggle of poverty and then there's the struggle the social struggle of poverty Mm -hmm. you know um and and not being able to fit in so and so then we've got our fight so he's doing his golden gloves fight in his dad's boxing gym is he a nepo baby (laughs) well i mean you could be a nepo baby I mean, I don't think he was, like, giving preference because he is a good athlete, right? Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Okay. I think he was definitely, I mean, we, we've just discussed how amazing he is athletically throughout the movie. Yeah. He's a great boxer. Um, and, But he's been working. He does this Golden Gloves fight, which seems to be a fight at this boxing gym. He's fighting Rodney, who is our bully. Right. And they keep going back and forth. And he wins the competition. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so- the next day we see Rodney at school. You know, there's a a little bit of trash talking back and forth. Yeah, Rodney wants a rematch. And I I gotta be honest, Rodney lost. And he's still very cocky. (laughs) Yes, for someone who lost. lost. He (laughs) he was undefeated before that. (laughs) But yeah, he is pretty cocky. He's like, they'll see that I slipped. You, sir, this is boxing. (laughs) yeah but then and then i was thinking about the dad. i guess the dad was a boxer too i was like it would be mm-hmm. so hard for me to watch my 17 year old son box 
Yeah, I get beat up. My just my like stepdad. Mentally. My stepdad does mixed martial arts, and um, and he he owns his own gym and whatnot. And once a year, he does a few like a tournament in Las Vegas. And my mom always goes with him, but my mom refuses to watch him fight because she's like, "Why would I want to watch my husband be beat up?" <laughs> yeah, so stressful. <laughs> like, not not fun. I yeah, I couldn't. So, um, I I think it was around this time that Izzy's with his his sister and some of her friends, and they encounter Rodney in the street. And Rodney, yeah, that was on the way to the the, the first double Dutch conversation. Okay, and Rodney is mean to them. He... Mean to the, and, and I mean like like physically, you know, he yes. he kind of bunches up their shirt, grabs them by his shirt, sort of thing, and um, yeah, just like a totally different vibe. Um, yes, than, this is than the some first of our other decoms bully that felt physically threatening. I would say, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I want to try to say say this carefully, but um, we were in New York, and it felt like if this would have taken place in L.A., that it would have been about gangs you know yeah like like that was because they the do vibe. say he's just a bully but yeah that is how right. I felt. he's physically bigger than everyone else in the movie essentially he was cast to be physically bigger and i mean he's supposed to be a 17 year old and he's being mean to their eight-year-old girls right like yeah. he's being mean to corbin blue also but um by extension like his <laughs> sister yeah. so yeah it, it was an interesting vibe and it did it did feel more threatening than other bullies like in johnny tsunami they weren't any bigger than him they did get in a fight but the fight felt so evenly matched right and they yeah. were mean rich boys but again i i think that this boys. is the golden era of disney where they've hit the the seriousness mm-hmm. and the fun right yes so you, the you, double you, dutch is so fun the, the double music dutch is, is so good so fun I'm it's so fun this music on spotify in my car i looked it up last night yeah, so good. I, I looked the soundtrack up and put it and put it on my Spotify. Yeah, it it was good. Um, so, so go ahead. After the fight, he does drop off the clothes. Um, Corbin Blue's character Izzy drops off the clothes the teacher had given Rodney outside Rodney's house, and Rodney takes them. We get the idea, obviously, that he did appreciate the clothes. He just did not want to walk around with them at school all day in a trash bag. Mm-hmm. And um, Rodney didn't know Corbin Blue hid behind a car, so Rodney didn't know who dropped off the clothes. The next day so just to show that like he is a bully but um our main character izzy is capable of seeing like that he is multifaceted he's not just a black and white character and i thought that was great um one of the girls on the joy jumpers quits because she says i am not here to play i'm here to win she's not here to make friends she's here to win yeah she ultimately uh betrays them and uh joins the um the dragons the dutch what dragons, was their name the yeah. dutch dragons dutch dragons um but this really is a big cool. problem because for double dutch you have to have at least four people it just right it doesn't work otherwise you have to have two spinners and one person jumping by themselves can only do so many tricks it's such a there's movement there's interaction there's choreography right there's athleticism yeah there's teamwork all of it um so yeah. Corbin Blue next day is talking to the girls outside and he is like double dutch isn't that hard it can't be because he jumps rope for for boxing for his footwork for All boxing. Time. right right and she's like Kiki Palmer says if it's so hard you do it and they start doing the speed test for him he mm-hmm. he, he jumps in once he messes up he jumps in a second time and he go and everyone's impressed they're impressed his sister sees it from outside their stoop she's impressed i mean it's amazing he is supposed to not be a habitual he's clearly double dutch before as we said mm-hmm. he double, he jumps right by himself all the time mm-hmm. he's just i mean yeah, faster, it's that way faster. it's that with their feet barely coming off the ground like it's uh, unbelievable yep. so they ask him to join kiki palmer whose name is mary who totally has a crush on him but they they kind of bar they have yeah she acts like a tough girl yeah she does she's like we don't need to ask him and he but the other two girls on the team are like we absolutely need to ask him they ask him join. <laughs> he says no later the other two girls approach him alone and they say just and he, they get him to agree to just practice with them so mm. they can choreograph and practice until they find a fourth right and they say mary mary loves this idea she's all about it and then the next scene mary isn't that all about it 
<laughs> so they agree to start working out. So they start working out at 6 a.m. in the gym before dad opens it mm-hmm. so that no one else sees them because, again, he doesn't really want to be seen as double dutching with these girls. Right. The yeah. I, I was very interested in, like, like, was he afraid of what his dad would think? And that was why he didn't tell him? Or... I think... I think it was less afraid of his dad's reactions. Like we said, we see he's such a supportive dad. I think he didn't want to disappoint his dad was the heart of it. Because he was supposed to be a star boxer. And because so he, he didn't, was, yeah. And he is, a, it's so much easier as someone who's not athletic at all. It's so much easier to tell your parents you don't want to do sports when you're already bad at it. If you're actually good at it, I can't imagine. Yeah. Because yeah. he was going to be a great boxer. His dad owns a boxing ring. And as they, as they realized <laughs> later, it, this is something they've bonded over since the death of his mother. The only thing they've bonded over since the death of right. his mother. Yeah, I guess I just see it as like, oh, it doesn't have to be an either or. Like, he could still be a it great doesn't. boxer. And and actually, a lot of the skills overlap, you know, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But yeah. It's but it's a decom, so. <laughs> we have to be upset about something. <laughs> right. If he said, Dad, I want to double dutch too. And his dad said, okay, great. We'll double dutch Great idea. 68. That'll actually make you a better athlete. And you can box after and we'll schedule the competitions around it. And he said, super duper (laughs) would not be a movie. Fair enough. (laughs) So to squash all your ideas. (laughs) So Um, he he starts really enjoying it. He he really, really likes it. They're practicing all the time. So there is a female boxer at the boxing ring. Her name is Tammy. She's Mm -hmm. great. And she sees him double dutching and she doesn't say anything but then they have a little practice match and she she pops him good and then mm-hmm. she's like uh, girl boxer one double dutch boy zero and now mm-hmm. while i originally was like this is internalized misogyny we learned that they have been making fun of her for being a girl boxer throughout her yeah. time so it's okay you were right <laughs> Tammy, is what i'm saying i was wrong to judge you, you. Tammy. that was a girl on girl crime on my part <laughs> and so he asks her to keep it quiet. She says, yeah, I'm not going to tell people, but mm-hmm. can you stop making fun of me for being a girl boxer since you're literally double dutching? Seems touching? reasonable. Seems fair. Yep. And he he's like, yeah. This next scene is when he's late for dinner at seven. We see him start to have a little bit of conflict with his dad. But like you said, it's so sweet. They're like, he's like, leave dinner at seven, at seven every night. I have a three-year-old and an eight-month-old. So dinner at seven sounded bananas late, but these children are much more grown than mine. <laughs> dinner at 4, 10 p.m. <laughs> right, exactly. That's my ideal dinner time. And then get them in bed. You in the retirement home. Exactly. Oh, so many times I have been at a restaurant and it's just my family and all the retirees because we're eating dinner at 5 p.m. all of us together. <laughs> And so anyone who has toddlers can relate to that fact. <laughs> and so yeah. he, the next day he's walking around Brooklyn and he sees kids double dutching in the park and they're just having fun. They're just, yeah. and they're great. But right. he talks to his squad and he says, we have to scrap your routine. It's too, he doesn't say it's, but it's too robotic. They're trying to perfect it. And he says, it needs to just be fun. That's the whole point of it. And yeah. so they go to look at the, he takes him to look at the double dutch team in the park and Mary says, I didn't realize they like, who are these people? I thought I knew every team. Mm-hmm. And he says, maybe they're just here for, to have some fun. Yeah. And so that really helps that inspires them to have a whole new routine and just recreate everything, which shows that he gets it. The heart right. he taught his dad says to him, boxing is 20% talent and 80% heart. Mm-hmm. And so we see here that he, this is him having the heart for double dutch. Yeah. That's where his heart is. Yeah. Double dutch, and... I looked it up, um, probably originated in the Netherlands, was brought to um, New York City by Dutch immigrants in the 20s. But since the 80s, it has been very linked to the African American hip hop scene in yeah um, new york so that's just yeah especially new york yeah i actually looked that up too <laughs> um <laughs> we're and, both and, on the double dutch wikipedia page there, there's some things that are like that uh something else that comes to mind is like roller skating like roller skating is something that mm-hmm. um you know obviously did not begin as a black culture thing but was definitely taken over um by adults that very similar you know just a fun way 
to to spend time to you know get some exercise and listen to good music and you know have fun um so i love that so izzy suggests that they change their name yeah to to, from the joy jumpers to the hot chili steppers i love it i do love it (laughs) so fun and while practicing he misses a practice fight at the gym and his dad's upset because his dad thinks he's just blowing him off right his dad thinks he's just a whole second commitment they talk about it and he talks with mary because they share a fire escape Mm -hmm. about disappointing his dad and mary says you know i used to do ballet and basically i was doing ballet to make my mom happy and my mom was signing me up for ballet to make me happy and once we talked about it we realized we were both fine with me stopping ballet and he says it's not you know that easy it's and i don't think he wants to stop boxing that's true i think he does enjoy both things so it's not the same as mary's ballet mary i'm just kidding Um, and then she just kisses him i thought it was so cute i thought it was so like a 14 year old kissing someone Mm -hmm. she just sort of like kisses him and runs away yeah it was it just felt very yeah. realistic for especially for a decom. I loved it. And they like don't talk about it again. <laughs> <laughs> it just continues. Yeah. So they're still practicing early morning in the gym. And one of the mornings, Rodney comes. And remember, this is the bully who wants a rematch. And, and he sees them. He sees them realizing. practicing. Without any of the double dutchers realizing he takes a bunch of photos. Yeah, because he's kind of like, I don't know, it's like stereotypical guys, just like, oh, they'll never believe this. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And what they're not believing is the fact that a guy would jump rope. Right. Well, exactly. or, or Izzy would jump rope. Um, right. That so Izzy, yeah. the great boxer. And so so well, Rodney say. puts the photos all over the school so that everyone can see it. And Izzy kind of sees it and is embarrassed, and then like everyone's laughing at him. I mean, everyone's laughing at him. There's pictures everywhere. And to top it all off, the day before he had missed a double dutch competition to go to a right. boxing match with his dad. Because so his he dad had invited him. The night yeah. before, disappointed his double dutch team, essentially picked boxing because he was picking his father. Mm-hmm. And now the next day, he's being made fun of for double dutch. So he feels like, and now I don't even have boxing like i've lost so so we're in like a a point of low self-esteem for Mm -hmm. izzy corbin blue's character and so he's like all right you know what rodney wants a rematch we're gonna rematch rodney just shows up at the gym with like a hundred guys where'd he get this many guys i I know it was kind of intimidating i was scared it was scary as the people (laughs) izzy didn't seem scared izzy also probably knew all of them but i was somewhere and this many guys just walked in i would be scared (laughs) no thank you right i don't really want to ever be alone in a room and just 100 teenage teenage guys walk in i would leave this is your room now goodbye (laughs) and so they have they start to have a fight Uh, not a like a fight fight like they get in they put they suit up glove up get in the ring like a boxing fight (laughs) it's like an underground fight in his dad's boxing ring i thought it was kind of fun first rule about fight club no one talks about i've never seen that movie i haven't either but i know that line (laughs) okay (laughs) (laughs) that's all i need to (laughs) so they're fighting and he starts rodney says you know stuff about double dutching is does say like something about Rodney's dad being out of work like just because your dad isn't working that. right now and I was like Izzy that was a lot lo- I realized Rodney's attacking you we don't need to talk about how his father's unemployed <laughs> how he's poor <laughs> it was basically a sorry you're poor and so Izzy starts flipping around to show this is what I'm doing in double dutch like it takes athletic prowess but right when boxing. she says Izzy is flipping around she means that Izzy is quite literally performing flips <laughs> within the, in the boxing, boxing ring. ring he is doing backflips he is doing handsprings like he is flipping around <laughs> and obviously Rodney can't hit him because you can't hit people who are doing backflips I wonder if that's allowed I don't know who boxing rules. boxers call either. us let us know Give us some <laughs> all our all our listeners who are competitional boxers that's right <laughs> anywho so then he just leaves he's like i don't need this fight well well what happens is that rodney gets in a compromising position um 
which makes that sound inappropriate, but it just means that Izzy could easily knock his block off. And um and Izzy is like, no, I'm not gonna do it. And just walks and knock his block off. Look at you in your how, how you've never heard that? No, I love I have. I I loved that you like, thought to say that. I thought I it was great. Know. I'm complimenting you. Thanks. <laughs> I know lots of boxing terminology. <laughs> yeah, I know so that's, that's it feels like a something like the peanuts would say. KO KO'd, but he's not KO'd. <laughs> he's not, um, no. He could have KO'd him. <laughs> yes, there we go. Uh but he's he decides, you know what, I'm gonna be the bigger guy. Like I, I don't need I don't need to prove myself. Um mm-hmm. which, which is uh is is a mature a mature thing to do, I think. Um mm-hmm. so yeah, so I mean he essentially wins again. And um yeah. I thought it was great. He leaves as Rodney leaves. Yeah, he falls out of the ring too. And Izzy still just walks away. He says, I'm not going to fight. I'm done fighting you. Mm -hmm. Which I thought was so, like, it's so much harder to walk away sometimes, especially when you can just win. Right. When you want to prove yourself, you want to be able to say, yes, I did that. Um, But that's not, not what happens. So, yeah. I do see him at another scene in the boxing rink. Someone says something about Tammy's a good boxer for a girl. And he says, Tammy's a good boxer period yeah. i appreciate that yeah it is um, he tries to apologize to kiki palmer she doesn't take his apology they're beefing which is fair because he missed a competition they're supposed to do. like it was a big thing and he's like yeah. let me back on the team you know what's interesting this just came to my mind is how many decoms there are with girls playing sports you know like i'm thinking there's mm-hmm. there's motocross there's um it's the one with beverly mitchell and they're in some sort of car right on track right on track um double teamed but that's not really about like girls doing sports but anyway at least motocross and right on track um you know girls having to prove themselves so mm-hmm. it's really interesting that with jump in they flip that uh with true. with a guy um and i don't know like i I said i love this movie i I think it was fantastic um and part of it is that they they kind of went there um you know in in exploring the the top topic of uh toxic masculinity really it's true Um, you know getting in the way of doing what you like and what you enjoy and and whatnot so anyway so that was izzy did not fall into that trap of needing to prove himself physically, which I think would be like a toxic masculinity sort of thing. Definitely. And he's um, able to walk away. Yeah. He, he sure is. Goes home. His dad had left like a gold set of boxing gloves on a chain on the bed. Not really like, like a pen, it's a pendant, it's a necklace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And on on Izzy's bed to share with him because he'd won the golden glove competition earlier. His dad doesn't know about the double touching. His dad doesn't know about the second fight with Rodney. Mm-hmm. His dad doesn't know a lot. He's got a lot on his plate. He's a single father. Right. And when he comes in, his dad, does he just tell his dad about the double touch? I, I oh, no, his Karen tells him. Karen says, I am not a dummy. I know you're on the red yeah, hot the chili sister. steppers. Yep. Or just the hot chili steppers. And I know like, I know your double dad. The dad's like, what? And he says, and this is what he tells his dad. You know, I've, that's what I've been doing. I've been double dutching. And it is hard for his dad at first. Yeah. Yeah, because he, he says, has the same idea that, yeah, that boxing that and double dutch are kind of opposed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so this Corbin Blue resolves, Izzy resolves to stick to boxing. You see him training in the gym next day. Tammy comes over. And she says, she's our female boxer. And she says, is there a competition for double dutch tomorrow? Like, why are you here? And he says, yeah. I have to focus on boxing. I'm sticking to boxing. I don't do double dutch anymore. And she says, you know, if I stopped boxing because people told me only guys box, like I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be the best, best female boxer in the city. Mm-hmm. But I figure everyone who has a problem with me being a boxer, that's their problem. So true, bestie. So true, bestie. And he takes it to heart. He goes and... We see then it then it just basically cuts to the competition. Yeah, so so now we're here. And the competition scenes. Wow. It's wow. a long competition. Wow. wow. It's like 20-ish, 25 minutes. So yeah, much like more interesting than the drill team competition 
anyway, could that Kelly? let me just say it. <laughs> I was watching those drill scenes and I was like, there's a lot of drill scenes. <laughs> um, but this time I was like, give me more double dutch. Give me more double dutch. The my fav- uh, Did you have a favorite move that you saw? No. I loved it. My movie. favorite move was the girl is sitting on the ground with her feet in front of her, right? So like an L mm-hmm. shape. And the double dutch, the jump ropes are going. And she somehow gets her whole body off the ground. Like, she, like she jumps, but she's not using her arms. Mm-hmm. Like, she is sitting mm-hmm. on the ground. And when the rope comes, somehow she just, like, I don't know, must get really tense. And her body jumps up. And she jumps rope like that, sitting on the ground. That so fast. I was too. like... Who even came up with that? No, you know what actually was my favorite move? I changed my mind. There is okay. one where someone does, is it Corbin Blue? It might be someone else. Does a backflip over the spinners yeah, to start was... jumping. Yeah. Blew my mind. It was interesting. Because I can't do a backflip. I can't enter double dutch from the side. I can't do any of these things. And he does them all at once. <laughs> it was interesting. And, and they incorporated a little bit of like uh, stomping. Mm-hmm. Or a I lot guess of the step, music I guess is, is, is. is hip hop throughout the movie. The music is primarily hip hop. It's really good. We get Push It to the Limit, which is great. Everyone go listen to Push It to the Limit. And it's great. The whole competition's great. We see he is wearing the so he was wearing a necklace the whole time mm-hmm. that had like the Jamaican flag colors on it. Yeah. And he's now added his dad's boxing glove to the necklace, mm-hmm. which is really sweet to show that like he does love his dad. Yeah. And Right before they go on stage at the competition, he looks into the audience and his dad's there with his sister, which was like, ugh. I was like, I, I know I was going to cry during this movie. Yeah. Here we are. And and I think it's not just that his dad's there with his sister, it's that his dad looks like proud as all get out. That's what it is. It's just, <laughs> but, so like proud. his dad, like it's, it's not just like, I don't know, like, you know how Troy Bolton's dad is like kind of like skeptical he was when just he's there. there? Yeah. Like, no, like Izzy's dad is like this is flipping awesome (laughs) you know like he has bought in he's just like i can't believe that my son is doing this yeah i just got chills like thinking it was so it was so beautiful yeah and his two friends are there tammy's there so it's just great to see that support for him he Mm -hmm. goes out they they bust the moves they look they're wearing their outfits are also kind of goofy i wasn't loving them but they are shiny and gold and they (laughs) glow in the dark which was kind of cool they're like gloves and shoes Uh, yeah i like their shoes because I, I just kept watching their feet to try to hack right. it. <laughs> and then they push into the limit comes on and they stop double touching and just dance for a little bit. And then they start yeah, that, that's what I was saying when I it, like I I think that's like mm. the incorporated step. Yeah, like moves yes. into it. You're right. Yeah, which which could great. be a whole other movie. <laughs> the whole competition is great. Um, we see the Dutch dragons. The girls meet again. Oh yeah, after the first competition, the Dutch dragon girl is like nice costumes but and i'm like you're wearing the most hideous thing i've ever seen in my life yeah she's she's just like a caricature of a bully yes she um, she's no rodney sort of, right and... she's no rodney. <laughs> speaking of and which then... guess who shows up <laughs> rodney is here i was like rodney's here i'm having rodney. the best time watching this and i'm gonna assume that rodney went because he wanted to make fun of it and then yeah. rodney was just like this is incredible because I'm telling you, if listeners, if you have not watched this movie, <laughs> if you haven't watched this movie in you have to years. at least like YouTube the the final scene or whatever. It's so good. Because there's no way anyone could see this and be like, mm, not impressed. <laughs> oh, oh, I could do that. unless yeah, unless you're this elite boxer that Izzy is. There's no way you could see this and be like, yeah, I could do that and then do it. Yeah. Although, have you seen those memes? It's like 75% of men or like so many men think that they could just like land a plane if they yeah. needed to. <laughs> no. Or like so they've beautiful. asked men, just regular men, do you think you could beat Serena Williams at tennis? Did your dog just yowl? No. Oh, I thought I heard a dog. Anywho, <laughs> do you think you could beat Serena Williams at tennis? And uh, a, a lot of them say, I don't remember how many it should be zero right it should be zero right it is zero well, well the, the most recent one i've seen is like could you beat caitlin clark one-on-one at basketball she's you know mm. a, a really oh. big college basketball star like mm-hmm. like right now they're talking like she's like the best female basketball no, player she's that amazing. has ever they, played they came and, in second lsu like, won yeah probably like just one-on-one <laughs> and here okay. she is like She's just scoring from the like 
half court line. <laughs> so anyway, that's the internalized misogyny we've been talking about this whole yes, episode. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there so was goofy. one moment. There's a couple lines I want to talk about. There's one moment when the pictures are up when one of his friends says, "Well, I mean, you look pretty," and he goes, "Your mom's pretty." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that was so 2007. I loved that he said yes. that. And then there is a line where she's crying on the, uh, Mary is crying after Yolanda was her name quits. Mm-hmm. And Corb Blue says, don't jump. It's not that serious. But she's on the fire escape. Um, I don't think that line would have been put in today. That yeah, line did age well. Not. Everything else about this movie aged so well, just not that one line. Yeah. But that yeah. was just something I thought was interesting. So we're at the competition. We get to the time when like the winners are announced. The Dutch Dragons. Wikipedia says they took second place. I thought they took third. I don't remember. I think they didn't win. That. The Dutch did Dragons not did not win. Because record because... trash, because we're gonna flash to Rodney. In present He's our day. narrator. He was the day. one narrating the story. He's telling kids so the story because I guess Rodney he's their boxing coach. had a conversion at the Double Dutch competition. Mm-hmm. Like, total change of heart. Total change of heart. Now, he, he love he's to talking see about what an electric day that was. Like, yeah. like he's like, no, like, it was a really big deal. Oh, so cool. So, in, like, story time after or before after his boxing class, he's teaching mm-hmm. these little kids about it, and it's great. It was so great to see such a big not just a little sense of sometimes when your bully has a character arc it's just a hey good game at the end kind right of thing. you get this this uh like it might not have been permanent yes but right. this one no we get proof rodney's really mm-hmm. the only one we catch up with in present day i loved it i thought it was yeah. amazing yeah so the red hot chili steppers win the competition they go on to state we learn they didn't win state that year they learn they win state the next year and it's his dad comes up to him after and his dad they have such a beautiful conversation where his dad says I focused on boxing because that's the only thing we've really been able to focus on since mom died but we need to be able to talk about everything Mm. I want you to do double dutch if it's what you want to do and I see how much you love it and I want us to talk about all of our issues and not just Basically, you realize they're they're fighting about boxing was not just about boxing. It was about the loss of his mother, this man's wife, and just grieving that, like... Yeah, just trying to cope with life. I'm going to choke it up right now. Because Mm -hmm. grief is so hard. Right. And it, like, changes every day. And so I just thought it was such a beautiful portrayal because a lot of times you do have arguments with people, I mean, about everything in life, but then especially with about grieving because mm-hmm. a lot of things you can change if someone doesn't like something about me I can work on that but we can't work on the fact that like mom's not coming back right and right. like maybe she was and like can you admit like maybe she was the one holding this family together right like that's so hard absolutely absolutely so to, to finally address that elephant in the room which mm-hmm. was really great and I thought it was beautiful and then after the competition is over we see dad trying to double dutch in the street super cute and they just say jump in jump in yeah love saying (laughs) do you want to discuss a couple things at the end when we're double dutching urban blue is wearing a sweatshirt vest over a t-shirt it's awful whoever dressed him why couldn't you You know but i feel like that's so like boxer you know like they wear they wear trash bags (laughs) but it's not ripped at the sleeves like the one he wears at the beginning of the movie is kind of ripped at the sleeves this one is hemmed at the sleeves Oh, it's like actually a vest. Yeah, I didn't notice like that. Just, just, he bought it that way. At one point, Kiki Palmer is wearing an iconic outfit that is a denim dress, mm-hmm. that is strapless, and then underneath it, she is wearing an orange tank top. So two thousand seven. <laughs> yeah, and oh, like and like a, a short useless sleeve. Belt. Useless belts we see all the time, but like a short sleeve shirt, like under like a spaghetti strap dress. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's so great all yes. denim dress um Amazing. that is as just strapless shirt yeah. underneath it i loved it so this movie came between high school musical one and two um it was pretty much exactly a year after high school musical one and about six maybe seven months before high school musical two um i i mean honestly i think this is corbin blue at his best yes it, like absolutely like like he he's good in high school musical but like 
I don't know. He's so good in this. They're it, all it really just... good actors. Kiki Palmer is a great actress. Yeah. The da- that's his real dad. That's Corbin Blue's dad? That's Corbin Blue's dad. What? Yeah. What? Corbin Blue is his middle name. And so his it's last his name is... in real life. My I goodness. His last name is... I think it's like River. And yeah, so... Like, yeah. Wow. R-E-R. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can't believe I didn't mention that. Oh, nuts. Top. I'm over here crying. And I'm not even mentioning that's his real dad. <laughs> <laughs> so great just i, I had so much fun um was it nostalgic for you final thoughts um was it nostalgic you know like i said i don't remember watching this when it came out um i don't know why but um it was no it wasn't really nostalgic for me <laughs> you know like like th- there were like the clothes and stuff right but, like I don't know. No, not really. How about you? I agree. I didn't really watch. I definitely watched it when it came out, but I did not rewatch it. And I definitely liked it. But again, it wasn't probably nostalgic for me. I had a great time, though. I loved it. Yeah. I mean, definitely. I remember listening to Push It to the Limit again, because this was a time in Disney on Disney Channel when they didn't do outside commercials. So when you were when Disney had its own radio station. So if your parents oh, wanted to listen to Queen music too. in the car, they would put on Disney radio. Yeah. And then you had to listen to Push It to the Limit because Absolutely. what else would you listen to? Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, like you said, they just play Push It to the Limit for commercials because they didn't have commercials. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's interesting uh, what you said before about the the time difference because I also grew up East Eastern time zone. And I'm wondering, like, we we only had one TV to, like, watch TV on. Like, mm-hmm. we had another one that, like, I don't know, hooked up, like, a PlayStation or something to it. Um, but what that meant was that on Friday nights at 8 o'clock, when these movies would have come on, there was a competition <laughs> <laughs> for what to put on the TV. Because my parents, at the same time, also were at the end of a long week and, you know, wanted to just watch TV. So, because a lot of these ones are ones that, like, looking at the time frame that I should have watched when it came out mm-hmm. um but that I don't remember watching and I think that that might be why which is interesting yeah interesting to think about um if does if, uh, go ahead if you look at the wikipedia page for this it says this episode's plot summary may be too long or excessively detailed so there are some stands out there putting every detail in the wikipedia page I appreciate it because I don't take notes when I watch the movie <laughs> so I do <laughs> I do watch it though <laughs> um Okay, Disney Wand IDs. What uh, are we going Honestly, because I'm Kelsey Bowman and you're watching the Disney Channel. Dun, dun, I, dun, ten, dun. 10 out of 10. I didn't think I would going into it because I mean, I didn't give last week a 10, week a 10 out of 10. I gave High School Musical. I'm trying to think of faults though. And Did you give Color of Friendship a 10? No. I gave it a 9. Did you really? Yeah. Okay. So and, you're giving this a 10? Um, Maybe 9. Maybe 9.5? Yeah, you can give it a half. I'm going to give it 9.5 because okay. it, I guess it could have done more, but it was so good. I'm I'm giving it a nine. And the reason is, is because, yeah, wouldn't change anything about it. It's just High School Musical was so next level. <laughs> you know, it's like, this... if you're, if you're going to get a 10, it can't just be like yeah. flawless. It needs to be like, like speechless life i mean this one made you cry so <laughs> high school musical is life-changing i did cry this didn't change my life but it was amazing yeah i guess that's it the second high school musical ended i said i want to watch high school musical again i want right. to listen to bop to the top you were of like the this is generation defining and right then here. you did give last week a 10 but when that ends you're like i'm speechless that movie like leaves you speechless i gave color of friendship a 10 i don't remember yeah. that I mean, you can change it now if you want. There's no rules. It's our podcast. <laughs> maybe I just felt bad giving it anything else. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> like they would come find me. <laughs> <laughs> Last week's was just so intense. I was so happy to have one that was fun. This was so fun. Fun to watch. Um, yeah, I'm going to stick with 9.5 because, yeah, when it ended, I didn't immediately want to watch it again. And that's, but I would definitely watch it. It. Like, I, I think my son might even like it. Cause it's just yeah. so fun. Like, who doesn't love double touching? Yeah. He's good. only three, so he doesn't like that many things that aren't Lightning McQueen. <laughs> so. Or Blippy. We're into Blippy now. 
He did like Bob to the top, though, so. Loves Bob to the top. That's true. I should play and push it to the limit. Anywho, tell him what we're doing next week. Um, Another really big one uh, that came out a little bit before this, but I would still say that the sweet spot of decoms. We Might are watching... be the beginning of the golden era. I think I think that would be it. It's the beginning of the golden era. Cheetah Girls. The Cheetah Girls. So it is an ensemble cast, but two of the leads are Black. And obviously it focuses on Raven Simone and her family. And so we are going for it. I love it. I'm so excited. I don't know the last time I seen it, but like I know all the words to Cinderella. So Yeah, I mean I, I know the soundtrack through and through. I don't know that I've seen the movie more than once. So do you think you've wait. seen it more than once? Oh, absolutely absolutely. Yeah, I don't know. Again, w- weird time. Because also in 2004, my my little sister would have been one. And it wasn't like today where if I want to, my son, okay, we watch, we watch. Right, Blippi. it wasn't on demand. He says, I want to watch Blippi again. I put on Blippi again. Right, yeah. No, it wasn't like the that. The next You're day right. he says, I want to watch Blippi. I don't have to go. Well, Blippi only is on from 6 to 6.30 p.m. That's so true. On Tuesdays. It's just, yeah, right. So you just different. have to wait. Yeah, we didn't even have on demand at that point. Um, yeah. Let alone streaming, just... so. Yeah, that's a great point. All right, so we are getting excited for next week. Yeah, uh, well, it's not a blockbuster, but it feels like it is. Um, so this has been Go Big or Go Decom. You can find us, connect with us on our Substack or go decom.substack.com. You can find us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You are welcome to watch us on YouTube if you want to see Kelsey's uh, Bernie's Mountain Dog making an appearance. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we have for this week so this has been go big or go decom i'm cc i'm kelsey thanks for listening bye